Hi guys, welcome to our homestead here on the south shore of Nova Scotia. Um, this video is for the lovely taste of Trini. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy. So as you can see, this is uh, the garden. I do have some other footage of the garden to show you. Um, so if we scan around, we can see the barn there in the distance. And we do have electric fence guys all the way around. We do have lots of deer around here, um, which would actually make a real mess if, we, if they, they could get in there. In the distance there, you might just be able to see over the long grass, we have the two beehives. They're in addition to our homestead this year, and they're already really, really doing a good job. They're busy in the garden. We haven't had our hay cut this year, so that's why it looks a bit of a wreck of around here at the minute. If I can just turn, there's our forest. I'll just excuse the quick moving around. I just wanted to show you these two trees here. There's one and there's two. They are um, two of our maple trees that we tap each year. Around about February, we start to make our maple syrup. Um, and that's where Taste of Trini's maple syrup came from, actually. Um, we'll just go back around. Everything we have is in close proximity to the house. It just keeps things safe. And there's the orchard the children's playset, and then we just scan back round to the house. So here we are in our garden, and I just thought I'd show you, this is our Echinacea, and this is a medicinal plant, um, it's really good for lots of different ailments. But we grow it for that reason and also because the bees absolutely love this. Bees and butterflies really, really do love this. Um, both honeybees and the wild bees. I don't know if you can see, it's just teeming with bees. Um, and next to that we have our calendula, which is also a medicinal plant. We like to grow and make calendula oil. And that's self-seed, so we don't have to worry about planting that each year. We just try to grow things and be in tune with nature. You know, you get rewarded for that. Bye for now. So there is some oh, sweet corn. <coughs> this is our garden. Um, it's pretty full, but we do have a few gaps appearing in the scarecrow. doesn't really work. Just pan around and you can see we have cabbages, cauliflowers, broccoli, all sorts of different stuff. Zucchini. There's my two little helpers. Corn, which you just saw. And our echinacea again. And just over there you can see the orchard. And the barn. Um, just go over here, try not to trip. So as you can see our garden is reasonably large. Um, we have lots of different things, variety of stuff that grows in here. So these guys are my Lavender Orpingtons, there's a mix of hens and roosters in here. Unfortunately they're in today because our meat birds are just um, really ripping chunks out of these guys. Um, and it's so hot we can't keep our meat birds in their pan. So they have to stay in until this weather kind of gets a bit better for us, but they're really really nice friendly birds. I don't know if they're camera's picking up the coloration of them but they are a very very light um, lavender colour. There is a couple of different ones in here too that we will put in with our flock, our laying flock at some point. So I thought 
thought I'd give you a little look at who we have and we have Mr Turkey and Mrs Mummy Turkey who's saying hi and the four young turkeys that is these guys offspring this year then over there we have our laying hens they're all um, looks like getting into trouble with each other at the moment and I think there's somebody else saying hello over here Hoppy! Pss, pss, pss. Hi Hoppy! Good boy Hoppy! So there is a little bit closer up on our laying hens and roosters It is super super hot today, it's just really really too hot Everyone's hot and bothered out here We uh, try and give them baths or Laura tries to give them a bath when it's so hot just to help them cool down a little bit Hoppy, you're here again, Hoppy Ooh, Where are you? There he is He is a cat that came to us by accident, we found him and he settled in pretty good Morning folks, it's a little bit um, less humid today than yesterday and um, we're in our, one of our chicken pens, this is Freezer Camp Pen The name kind of gives away what these birds are for, these are our meat chickens um, They're not the typical overweight, oversized white meat chicken that everybody would be more familiar with All of our birds are heritage breeds which means that they're old world breeds, um, breeds from way back when um, and they produce a much better flavour, um, slightly different sized um, body to, as I say, the, the big white birds. Um, for the purpose of the video these guys I just kept in this morning but they do all free range um, around the homestead. Um, eat lots of grass and lots of bugs. As you can see, there's some pretty birds in here. It's a mixture of roosters and hens. Hi guys, so other than the chickens, the turkeys, the guineas that we have, we have some rabbits. And this really wasn't something we planned, but one day when Laura was taking a walk down the road there she found this rabbit here and about five days after this rabbit came these little guys came um, which we kind of expected people do dump rabbits the one at the front there the brown coloration is called spud I think we're going to keep him and the others I really don't know, we'll have to think about what we're going to do with those guys. Um, people do raise meat rabbits around here, uh, but I think these guys are just more pet rabbits. They, they don't really look like meat ones as such, their size is quite small. So here we are behind the back of the barn in one of our paddocks and um, this is where the birds are chilling out. It's another hot day today. They're just underneath the apple tree there um, having some dust baths, trying to keep cool. Um, this paddock is usually has some large livestock in but this year we haven't got anything in here so we'll just get this um, made into hay. Um, and the farmer who does that for us, he'll probably just take the hay away. Um, it just saves less hassle for us. Other than the chickens and the turkeys and guineas and all the produce that we have in the garden, um, we do a lot of foraging for wild foods and um, we also hunt for wild game. Um, that's usually in the fall months. Um, there's lots of deer around, rabbits, um, grouse are quite plentiful throughout the forest so we try to get some wild game as an addition as well as what we raise here. 
So folks, I hope you have enjoyed watching a little bit about our homestead and what we do here. And thank you for watching. Hello everyone and welcome to my session of Mako My Kitchen. Um, today I'm going to be making paratha roti or basa to all the locals. Um, it's my first time doing this. I've never done it before. Um, so this is going to be an experiment, hopefully a successful experiment, but you get to come along and see how well I fare or don't fare very well, whichever one it is. Um, I have three cups of flour. I'm in the bowl already. And right here I have my baking powder and also some salt. And for the baking powder, I used Rumford aluminum free baking powder. Um, non-GMO and here is my ghee. I mix it with um, grass-fed Kerrygold butter. So I usually when I bake pie, pies, um, I get amazing results when I mix um, some sort of a lard with the butter. So I'm going to try mixing ghee and the Irish butter. So let's see. Let's see how it works. Um, and I have my two cups of water right here. And for flour, yes, I am at a higher altitude. So um, I picked up a flour, supposedly high altitude, as it says on the bag. But does it make a difference? I don't know. So it, it's really my first time trying to make anything with flour since I've been here. But I know for a fact there needs to be some adjustments made. So I started with this and before I forget um, for the baking powder I actually had to according to my research whatever the recipe called for I had to do a quarter teaspoon less so if it called for three teaspoons I had to reduce each teaspoon by a quarter so yeah so hopefully I got the measurements right and here is my rolling pin. I love it. It's marble and it was a gift from my hubby and is just an amazing find. So yes, she will be in the kitchen with me today. Alrighty, so let's get started. I'm going to take my ring off because I don't like flour on my hand. Go figure, right? So <laughs> I may be washing my hands a couple of times before this is over. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the salt and the baking powder and I keep trying to say baking soda so forgive me if I do at any point and I'm gonna go ahead and mix this in and I don't know about anyone else but I simply do not like the feel of flour on my hands sometimes not sometimes most times but you know when you're learning to do something it's really good to feel it with your hands so when you start using <laughs> the machinery you can tell if something's going south really quick. Um, but yeah, I, I do it, I'm doing it this way because I know for a fact I wanna feel the consistency and texture of the dough. So at least I know what it should feel and look like. I'm gonna start adding water and it's room temperature. Um, it's not lukewarm, I'm not sure if that makes a difference, but I'm gonna go ahead and start putting water in. And I'll stop right there. And it's getting sticky. <laughs> this is not the fun part. <laughs> I'm gonna put some more water. And I'm thinking because I'm at a higher altitude, I'm probably gonna use a lot more water. Um, I'm still learning the science behind baking and cooking here, but we simply love it. So I'm guessing it'll only be a matter of time before it'll become second nature. Some more water. Yeah. So far, I've put a cup of water, and as you can see, um, ah, it's sticking to my hand. <laughs> uh, as you can see, um, it's still relatively dry so um, and I don't want to over knead the flour because according to the instructions you don't have to ha, there we go it's starting to get a little bit bumpy which is good oh boy this is the part 
part that I don't like. <laughs> okay, let's try that and see. And I think this should do it. I'm not sure if you can see that, but here it is. Yeah, this is it. This will do it. If, only if, I can get this flower off my hand. <laughs> yeah, she tries making something that she needs to put her hand in, something she's not a fan of. Isn't that great? <laughs> well, that's what experimenting is about. I love being in the kitchen and trying new recipes and doing stuff. And I grew up watching my aunts, you know, master this and make this roti like it's, it's like it's just bat batting an eye. <laughs> I am sorry to you have to see me struggling <laughs> with a flower, but I'm just really trying. Okay, I'm gonna go wash my hands and um, I'm gonna let this sit for 30 minutes. I forgot to mention, um, I don't have a traditional tawa. Hopefully I can get one, but I consider this a tawa. This is a lodge cast iron um, <laughs> griddle. And I would you guys not say this qualifies as a tawa? It looks amazing. I love everything lodge and cast iron. So um, I'm gonna, I just bought this like two months ago. I'm gonna give it an initial seasoning before using it for the roti. Um, so I'm off to do that now. Okay, um, this has been sitting for about almost an hour, so I'm going to take this off and get started on making um, a couple of um, smaller dough balls. Um, okay, again, I don't like stuff all over my hand, but it is what it is. <laughs> oh, I thought it was going to be pretty not cool, but it turned out okay. And I'm going to put some flour on my hand because it seems to be a little bit sticky. I thought it was going to be a lot more firm than that, so that's a good thing actually, I think. And I forgot to take my ring off. Ha ha! Rings off. And okay, I'm going to do this and just do this really quick because I'm going to use this anyway. So that's one. And yep, here we go. I'm learning, Raish. I'm learning by watching you, Raish. Okay. <laughs> okay, it feels a little sticky. I'm not sure if that's the way it's supposed to be, but we will see. <laughs> we will see soon enough. We will see. All right. And. Uh, I'm going to put some flour here. I'll adjust the camera in just a minute so you have a better view. So that's one. And then let's do two. The dough does feel a little bit different on the high altitude flour. I'm guessing they did it a little bit differently. That's three. <laughs> I learned this from Taste of Trini, so I watched her hands quite a bit. <laughs> so I'm actually feeling really good about myself that I did not drop one yet, so... It's really cool to be doing this because I remember as a kid watching my family members do this and, you know, it just looked like work. 
Um, which it is, but doing it right now just brings me back to that moment and, you know, the fun and fellowship that you have surrounding food and um, preserving the culture, you know, it's just, it breaks my heart when I see things slipping away, so I'm really glad to be trying this and and at least learning it. Um, I'm keto, my, my husband is not, so... <laughs> We do enjoy these moments together where it's like, you know what, let's just do this and call it a day. Let's just break all the rules. And that's what we're doing today. We're just breaking all the keto rules today. Yeah, this one's a little bit small, so, eh. Doesn't really matter, does it? Okay, and we're back. Um, I've never done, okay, like I said, I've never done any of this, so I'm going to start by rolling this one out. <laughs> Since it's the smallest one, if I get it wrong with this one, it's okay, I can correct it on the others. Um, so let's try that. Okay, I'm going to try that. My favorite rolling pin. Love it. Okay. I'm thinking I'll just move you over there so I have enough room. Okay, this is not going well, but I'm guessing um, I'll just do that over here. Um, and you need to just go over here. Um, here we go. All right, this should be better. <laughs> Matt Flower and I are not friends. Yeah, here we go. Really? Seriously, you're gonna embarrass me? Really? <laughs> um, it's really fluffy, the flower, so. Not, well, light, very, very light. I'm not sure if it's supposed to feel that way. And, um, but <laughs> let's try it. Again, this is really small, but you're supposed to do this with it. And here we go. Do this with it, cut it. Cut it. I just, I'll turn around and get a knife in a minute. Just, <laughs> I really want to figure this out. And I'm going to do this. Do this. And again, I'm using um, ghee and grass-fed butter. Um, Kerrygold, I love Kerrygold butter, so I think Kerrygold butter makes everything better. <laughs> and I'm um, gonna follow instructions and do this. A little bit of flour here. Okay, and this. Folding, I'm hoping you can see that. Um, go here. Folding, 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 and then take this piece, <laughs> this is where I think I'm going to lose it, and fold it in, all of that in, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is a mess, okay, fold it in, <laughs> and um, then you stick your finger down the middle. Ah, not a horrible for a first try. What do you think? <laughs> Let's see what happens with this. Hmm. 
interesting. Okay. Do two inches so that's one, two from there. Okay. Righty, and then I'm going to do this. And I don't have a brush or anything, so I'm just using the back of the spoon. And I'm also currying some potatoes. Um, I don't have any chickpeas, so um, yeah. <laughs> well, tonight's actually taco night, to be honest. And um, <laughs> I'm basically doing this, so we'll have it tomorrow. I meal prep on the weekends, so this is um, part of the meal prep process. But I'm sure hubby's gonna want to try it tonight <laughs> when he gets home from work. So. Yeah, if I get the thumbs up from him, I know I did a good job. And there we go, that is right there. And there it is. Some flour right there. Okay, and we start folding. And folding. Perfect, but <laughs> um, I'm learning what to do and what not to do next time. So I just finished rolling it out. I'm not sure if you can see it properly, but there she is. And that's my other video. Um, Right, I did roll out the smaller one just so <laughs> I can get practice instead of ruining a big one. I can figure this out this way. Okay, um, I'm gonna switch you guys over to the stove and hopefully I can get it, you know, set up correctly. So be right back. And here we go. Okay, um, my stove is kind of like lopsided, so the oil keeps moving around. But let's see what happens. And this is a small one. Cute. Ah! Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> and I'm gonna turn this up a little bit more. Um, I'm so excited. This is my first. Um, Rosie going on this over here. And I have to turn the heat up a little bit more. Um, and it's not sticking, so yay. Um, even though I have to tweak this a little bit. Um, I'm gonna take a peek on the other side and see. <laughs> what's happening with it. And yes, I'm improvising with the doublas. <laughs> wow. Hey. Ooh, I forgot to do this. Ah. Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> got to do that. And then I guess when it bubbles up, you take it and you turn it over. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> this is pretty damn funny. Oh my gosh. Can't believe I'm doing this. Okay. There's the middle. That's the middle. And you scrape it. You scrape it. <laughs> and bring it in. So that the end's cooked. And it's crunchy. Looks like it's cooked. Um, yep. I don't see any raw flour in there. So, and again, this one was pretty small, but um, it looks okay. Um, yeah. Wow, I'm impressed with my own self. <laughs> okay, and you go over here. And um, ladies and gentlemen, ta-da! My first ever gossip shot. Ha ha! Yay! Yes, the napkin's not pretty. Um. But, um, I am going to use my, one of my cast iron lids to cover this so it remains, um, moist. So I'll just do that for now. So, yay! That's exciting. I'm not sure what this is going to look like. So don't hold it against me. <laughs> yep, cook. What do you think? Passable for the first shot? <laughs> it is soft, um, but I need to figure out how to handle the, um, the, the um, cast iron. So it's all about epicness. As you must see. We want to make our kitchen, make our this kitchen, ah, add rice and pickle. No need greatness. Very simple flavors, I should say. See, that is a great corn. And this is a great pickle. Bung bang, Batman out. <laughs>